Hey YouTube, this is Drizzle. I'm doing a follow-up video to my Sonnet Breakaway box that I did uh, here the other day. Um, part of the noise in the background. My cat seems to be sneezing. Anyways, um, first of all, I went ahead and swapped out the fan in there and turned them, turned it around because it was uh, it was blowing out, and then the GPU was blowing out the other direction, and thus no cool air was being drawn in, and uh, the GPU was running pretty hot. But this way, it's uh, quite a bit better, and I've put in a Corsair 120mm RGB fan, which I think looks kind of cool. Although it probably would have been better if I had a blue one just to match the uh, color of the case. Or, you know, L LED, but that's cool. It looks nice. Runs a little bit better. So, uh, the problem I was having before was that I couldn't get games to run on uh, the internal display. In fact, like, yeah, uh, in the last video I got to work on my external display, but not the internal display. Well, it turned out I was wrong a little bit in that uh, the game I tested, which is The Forest, um, for some reason doesn't work on the internal display while using uh, the breakaway box. I, I don't know why. Uh, I can't seem to get it to use it. Uh, it. It still wants to use the Intel card. But the uh, most, most of the games I've tested do work. There's been some weird aberrant behavior, which I'll kind of explain here as we go through it, but uh, most of the games I've tried, including like benchmarks and so forth, do work. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how I got it to work, and then I'm going to, uh, which I found actually a guide online that somebody had used a similar product. I don't think it was the same, I don't think it was the Sonic brand. It was like uh, something from Asus or some other company, you know, that also makes external graphics enclosures. So it was the same concept, it was just a different brand, but it still worked the same way. And uh, what they suggest you do, in the case of this laptop, it normally has, uh, the CPU is a 7700HQ i7 with the Intel uh, 630 integrated video card, and then it has a GTX 1060 dedicated card, um, which you can't have the 1060 active and also use the eGPU because uh, they both need PCI Express lanes. I kind of went over that in the last video to some degree. I thought just disabling the device in the device manager was all you'd have to do. That is not correct. Uh, disabling the GPU, I should say, doesn't deal with it. What you have to do is actually disable the controller. Sorry about the reflection on the screen there. Uh, it's for my ceiling light. You have to disable the controller that runs the GPU, the PCI Express bus that handles it. So what you do is you go into your device manager, you change it to, sorry, you go to view and hit devices by connection and it will rearrange your list and then you need to find your dedicated video card in this case my 1060 and then you go one device above that which is this in this case it's this Intel Xeon 1200, 1500, 5th, 6th gen core, whatever it's a PCI Express controller and you disable that and that will completely kill the 1060 in the system it'll stop detecting it entirely like if I go into GPU Z right now it doesn't even know I have that card anymore then you reboot the system, it comes back up, and now, this is, as long as you're using an AMD card like I am, the system thinks you're, you're still using a switchable graphic system, but it's an AMD-based switchable graphic system now instead of an uh, NVIDIA-based one. And so all the lovely little switchable graphics settings uh, in their the adrenaline control panel, I think is what they call this, the Radeon settings, see now I get a switchable graphics option, whereas before that was not available. So killing the 1060 allows you to use the RX Vega 64 in this case uh, properly and most games will use it. Uh, there's a few I don't have that don't use it uh, right away and then it's like the game will populate this list in here of recent applications and you can tell it to run in high performance mode and then the next time you reload the game it picks up and runs on the dedicated card instead of the Intel card. So that seems to have solved a lot of the problems. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to run uh, a 3D Mark Fire Strike benchmark using the Vega card. I've already done it before, but I'll go ahead and run it for you guys. I'll just basically start the program up, and then I'll pause, and then we'll pick up and look at the uh, the score. And then I'm going to shut everything off. I'll pause my video again, and I will pick up and run it with a 1060 and see which does a better job and by how much of a difference there is, and to see if like using this eGPU is even worth it on this machine. It'd be more worth it on a machine that didn't have dedicated video, obviously. But anyways. I will be back in a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and load up 3D Mark and we'll see what happens. Alright, so we've got Fire Strike set up here. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to run this and uh, we'll get it started here. I'll kind of let you see a little bit of the initial part of the test 
then I'll pause and pick up at the end of it because it takes like seven, seven and a half minutes to run or something stupid like that. And uh, I'm not going to have you just sit there and watch that. It's boring. It's just like running basically graphical tests that you can you can see on YouTube if you really you know Google it, find it somewhere else if you want to watch it. It's it's not that exciting. It's just like I say, basically watching the thing get whatever frame rate it's going to get. But uh, here we go. It's going to load up. I apologize like for recording this with my phone as opposed to like using some kind of a like AMD uses their Relive software. I haven't tried installing that uh, like a standalone installer for it, but normally um, when you install that on like on my desktop I installed that and it didn't need anything special. Let's see if we can uh, there you go. Frame rates hit around 80, 90, over a hundred. So this test is running quite well. You can hear the GPU is picking up. I don't know how well you can hear that, but the mic on my, I'm using a headset to record this. The mic uh, should be picking it up pretty well. It's definitely getting louder as the fan curve picks up to compensate for the heat. Uh, this thing doesn't run too bad now, now that i got the fan pointed in the right direction. I think the GPU's only getting to about 68 degrees now, whereas before it was getting like close to 80. Um, I don't know why they put the fan in it the way that they do. I suppose it would depend on um, the kind of card you were using, you know, and how the fan, like if it had a blower fan, it would be different. So I guess they do what they do, but I think this looks better with the red fan and you know the red RGB and lights and uh, whatnot. But I'll pause here for a second, and when I get to the end of the test, we'll see how it scored. And then, like I say, I will shut down the the machine, and I will go ahead and uh, re-enable my 1060 and see how that does. Because there's latency due to the Thunderbolt 3 port, or uh, cable I should say, it's got to send data from the machine to the card, you know, back to the machine, constantly going back and forth. Now, it's 40 gigabits per second. It's very high bandwidth for a cable, but still, you're experiencing some latency, and that's going to affect your, your gaming performance. It's clearly doing a good job. I was playing games on it yesterday, uh, or I guess it was two days ago, just to screw around with it and see how it did, and it did a good job. Uh, it gets a good frame rate on max settings, like Witcher 3 ran really good, for example. So it can definitely do the job. Um, but the question is, is it really worth doing it in a system like this that already has a decent dedicated card? Will the 1060 do a comparative job, or will it be quite a bit better from the Vega? We'll have to see. I'll be back in a minute when we get to our score. Alright, so our score here was 13,905, which actually is not too bad for a single GPU in the Fire Strike test. But what we'll do is, like I say, I will stop the video, I'll go ahead and uh, disconnect the, the Radeon card, uh, go back to using my NVIDIA 1060, and run the test again and see how it does, and then I'll load up these two tests on the uh, FutureMark website, and we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and look at like the frame rates and the different tests and see how they did uh, to see you know which one does better. I can't imagine the 1060 beating this score. It, it shouldn't, but there again, there is latency caused by this card. Um, before I get sidetracked again, earlier I was talking about AMD Relive software. The re another reason not to use that, and I'd rather record with my phone, is that running programs like AMD Relive or NVIDIA Shadow Play do have to take some of your, uh, your shader cores from the video card to do the recording, and thus they reduce your performance a little bit. So in this situation where I'm already losing performance by having the card in the external enclosure, I don't want to lose more performance by trying to run uh, a video recording program. Plus, who knows what bugs that could introduce into this scenario. With that said, I will be right back and we'll run it with the 1060 and try it again. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. The 1060 has been re-enabled. eGPU has been disconnected and shut down. I've reboot. I've re-enabled the PCI Express controller from earlier. And we've got 3D marks set up to load. That cat sneezing again. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get this started here, and I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can help him out while this is running, and we'll see how this scores, and we'll compare them, but I'll be right back. I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is with the 1060. I mean, that Vega was stomping it. I know it's hard to see this uh, reflection on here and stuff is kind of lousy, but yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm a little bit shocked at how much better the Vega did, especially with the latency of the cable and everything else. I know the Vega is clearly a more expensive, more powerful card, and it's about twice as expensive as a uh, as a GTX 1060. But still, that's uh, 
that is much, much more powerful uh, difference between the two than I than I thought it would be. Hard to see this frame right there. You go. It's not doing too bad, but like I say, the Vega was getting in like the 80s, 90s, and over 100 in some of these tests. So pretty wild. Anyways, we'll be back here in a minute to see the result. I just wanted to bring that in here real quick because that's surprising to me. I thought this thing, I thought it would be a lot closer. But I'll be right back. Well, there you go. This has only got uh, a little shy of 10,000. That's a pretty big difference between this card and the other one. Now, like I said, I know the Vega card is more powerful, but there's that latency caused by the cable, and this is still the result. Um, I'd kind of like to do, again, I don't have another laptop I can test this with, but it'd be kind of interesting to see how uh, a laptop with a built-in 1070 would do versus that, that Vega. Although I lo looked at uh, Google today, and um, the Vega beats out a 1070 in most tests, and it beats out a 1070 Ti in the vast majority of tests. Um, but 1080 is where it starts to, to really start to trade blows pretty heavily. And then, of course, the 1080 Ti beats up the Vega pretty much everywhere, uh, except for uh, just a couple of simple tests. But anywho, uh, I'm going to pause a second. I'm going to load up the website for FutureMark, and we'll do like a, a direct side-by-side -side comparison look at these numbers here. So, one sec. All right, so you can see the, the point the score difference was almost exactly 4,000 points. Here over, um, it's just going to call it generic VGA because clearly it doesn't fully recognize or know what the heck you know external GPU is. And then there's our 1060 over here with uh, our six gigs of video memory versus our eight gigs of high bandwidth memory over here, HBM2 rather. And I mean, just across the board, you know, 40% better uh, graphic score is 53% better. Physics score is basically the same because it's it just does that with the CPU, so that's not going to change. Not sure why it actually did better here, but I mean it's it's the same same score. Combined score I think is uh, like usually physics plus some graphical test, and of course it's about 40% better here, and across the board 50 you know 57% almost almost 51%. Again, physics test is basically the same as it's just the CPU, and then the combined test again almost 41% better, everything else being the same. So, you can definitely see, uh, even on a laptop like this Alienware 13 R3 with our OLED panel um, that has its built-in GTX 1060, and remember the mobile 10 series cards are basically just as powerful as their desktop brethren. And so, you know, a desktop 1060 versus a Vega 64. Now this is a synthetic benchmark, so playing it in games is going to be a different story. You're going to get different results. Some games will favor AMD, some will favor NVIDIA. But at least in this benchmark, uh, you can see quite clearly that uh, the Vega is not a slouch, uh, even when having to be run over a Thunderbolt 3 cable, which, which kneecaps a little bit. So that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comment section. I'll be, my, you know, I'll be around and I'll do my best to answer them for you. But maybe you go ahead and click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to the channel if you like my content. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a great weekend. Bye.